And the Bible even says that this, is, this entire world system is actually, whether we believe it or not, is controlled by Satan according to 2 Corinthians 10. And his whole game is to get our hearts invested in things that are ultimately gonna war with Jesus in our hearts. It's, they're, they're gonna weaken us. Here's what we gotta understand. There's only so much room in your heart. You know this, right? right like you, you, can, you can enjoy a lot of stuff on earth, but only one thing can be central. Only one thing can be at the center of the center. And if it's not Jesus, that's competition for his kingship. And so John says, don't love the world, man. That is not of the Father. God's will is that we're dead to the world and the world is dead to us. Verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the world. It's not from the Father, but from the world. Let's talk about three deceptive overloves. Overloves, here they are. The first that he mentioned, the lust of the flesh. Let me read this to you. This is the definition I wrote down. Lust of the flesh, what, what is lust? It is a craving or longing desire for that which is forbidden or in the wrong amount or in the wrong timing or as someone else's, including their body, their companionship, their accomplishments, their success, their stuff, their status, or their opportunities. That's lust. But let me give you an even more technically accurate definition of this word lust. This, the Greek word behind this is epithemia, and it means an over-desire. That epi means over. It means too much. You've gone too far with this thing. So, it, so there's going to be things that like, that's good if it's a little, but God says, don't epi desire that thing. Don't over desire, I desire it because that, then it becomes lust. Then it becomes not safe. Then I'm forbidding it for a reason because it will hurt you and hurt those around you. So that means, hey dude, enjoy food. Food's good, but don't live for food, Right? Hey, man, enjoy your, your leisure. Enjoy your play. And man, we're a part of a generation that just completely idolizes leisure. Oh, my word. The Lord says, six days shall you work and one day shall you rest. But man, hey, enjoy leisure, okay? Enjoy it, but don't live for it. Hey, if you're married, enjoy sex, but don't live for sex. God says, that's too much. That's dangerous. That will hijack your heart and keep leading you in a way to invest in things that ultimately are perishing anyway. They don't lead you anywhere good, but they do distract you from something good. The lust of the eyes. A lot of hell happens because of what we see. The eye is a doorway to things that will mess us up. Think about Eve. Remember, it was what she saw ultimately that got her in trouble. Uh, this is Genesis 3, 6. You don't have it in your nose, but you can listen. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she saw it and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate too. Um, the entire fall of the world started with the lust of the eyes. We don't know how our lusting of the eyes, we don't know what it leads to. We don't know how it will hurt those around us. And God says, you don't need to know. You just need to trust me. It's a bad deal. So, it's not that you can't look at stuff. It's not that you can't appreciate beauty. But don't over-desire it. And don't desire somebody else's. And don't desire the wrong amounts or in the wrong time. Or that which I've said, that's forbidden for you. The boastful pride of life. This is over-desire for people to think I'm special. It's the over-desire of the ego. This is where I want everyone to know that I'm important, or I'm really just too concerned of whether or not you think I'm important or unimportant, because I could be unimportant, and it's still the epi-ego. It's the over-desire of ego. That means I want everyone to know, hey, um, I have better stuff. This is the way of the world. I have better stuff. I know better people. I have better access. I have a better reputation. Um, I have better beauty. I have better everything than you. That's what I'm trying to say. That is epi-ego. That is the over-desire, the boastful pride of life. So <clears throat> as is often the case, God teaches me lessons through my dogs. Um, now, I've got two dogs, okay, and they're very different. One of them is small and kind of arrogant, okay? His name's Max. And he's one of these dogs that he can be sweet on occasion, but a lot of times he'll look at you like, what are you doing? Don't touch me. You know, he's kind of like a cat dog, all right? <laughs> 
Um, and, and if you do touch him, he'll get really upset because he's him and who are you, right? That's how he's thinking. Now then there's my dog Chesterton who is super innocent, super playful. He's always happy to see everybody. He's never mad about anything. And he, they couldn't be more different. So, I, you know, I see Chesterton and he never thinks about himself. It's always about the person in front of him. Like it would never occur to him to think, I wonder how I'm doing. He doesn't think, that, dude, the dude is buck naked all the time, but he never notices <laughs> because he's not thinking about himself. And it sounds weird. I know, you know, I know he's a dog. I know that there's really mostly white noise between his ears for the most part, but God still uses it to teach me a lesson. I'm like, I want to be like Chesterton. Not the buck naked part, don't worry. But the part, <laughs> the part that says, I want to just not even notice myself. I want to be so into serving those around me and loving those around me. It doesn't even occur to me that I'm a thing that needs to be worried about. I'm just so innocent, so free that I can just be focused on everybody else. That's the opposite of the boastful pride of life. The world is passing away and it also it's lust, but the one who does the will of God lives forever. The world is passing away. God says, this system that you see in front of you, dude, you're watching it decay before your eyes. Like this is a really stupid thing to put your hope in. You're, if, if everything is riding on this for you, your hopes are gonna be crushed. This is an empty promise. This is going nowhere, man. Listen, it doesn't matter. This is doomed. It doesn't matter what the job is you get. It doesn't matter what relationship you have. It doesn't matter how much sex you can get. It doesn't matter how much money you can get. All of them are going away. They are temporary. They are interim and they're keeping you from the ultimate what, what does that mean dude they're, they're interim they're the thing before the real thing they're the thing before the last thing they're the thing that is like yeah this is now but we know it's going away how many think it's a good idea to invest in fax machines right now you think that's a good idea no because dude dude they're going going gone in fact that, that's a, that'd be a foolish place to put your money why because they're going away you know they're going away. And God says, why do you invest so much in what you know is going away? Why do you focus on the interim when you're aware of the ultimate? Even, let's, let's use the example of sex. Okay, it's okay to enjoy sex within the, the confines of marriage, but don't make it ultimate. Make it interim. Here's what sex is really supposed to be. What it's really supposed to show us, for all of its beauty, it's supposed to say, even though you don't understand it totally, this is a picture of what's coming. This is a picture of the ultimate relational connection and intimacy and ecstasy and consummation that you are gonna have in heaven with Jesus in a way that you can't even understand. That's what it's really about. That's why our, the best thing that we could do is instead of investing in all these things, is to say, you know what, I'm gonna appreciate all these things, but I'm gonna touch it lightly. I'm gonna let my heart into it. I'm gonna say, oh, that's good. That's great. You know, I'm glad, I'm glad I won the award. Cool. I'm not gonna put my heart into it though. That's great. You know, I like food. Food's great. But I'm gonna guard my heart against giving my heart to food. I'm not gonna eat to live. Hey man, that's awesome that that is the amount of sex you have in your marriage. Terrific. Don't put your heart in it though. Like light touch. Hey, that's awesome, but it is only a preview of what is to come. This is interim. It's supposed to point me to the ultimate. And the ultimate is what I'm investing in. The ultimate is where I'm going. 